As I minister to you a message that came to, to my heart so clearly, particularly in the season in which we are in, I believe with all of my heart that it's God's will for you to experience a better life. Amen. And that's the title of the message today. Experience a better life. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your life specifically. But what I do believe is that there is better. There's better for you. There's better for you individually, where your own self-worth and your own self-esteem is concerned. There's better for you where your family is concerned. There's a better life available for you than the one you've been living. In John chapter 10 and verse number 10, Jesus is talking to God's sheep. And he says that the thief doesn't come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So that you and I could have life. The truth of the matter, there's people that are alive right now in a hospital. But I don't believe that's the kind of life that he came for us to have. In my opinion, they're being robbed right now of the quality of life that they could have because of the sickness and disease that they're dealing with while they're laid up in the hospital. You could be alive and in a coma. You could be alive in a rehabilitation center or a nursing home. You could be alive in your own bed or in a dark place. But that's not what he came. He didn't come just so that you and I could have life. He came specifically that we could have life and that we could have it more abundantly. There is a better life than the one you've been living. Don't let his coming then be in vain. As we celebrate the fact that Jesus came to the earth, to live, to die, to give his life for us, as we celebrate that, don't let his coming to us be in vain. If he came so that you could experience a better life, then do everything you can to enter into that life that he's made available for you and for me. To me, that's what Christmas really means. It means experiencing a better life. Yeah. Because the very fact that it came means that I get to experience a better life. Amen? Yeah. Now, I know, you know, people get caught up with the idea that Christmas is not in the Bible and it's from a pagan origin. And, you know, uh, all this about the Christmas tree and all of this. And, you know, Jesus wasn't actually born on December the 25th, etc., etc., etc. I was at a birthday party yesterday at Chuck E. Cheese. Matter of fact, our drummer's grandson 
official prophet's son had his two-year-old birthday. Well, I don't know if yesterday was the actual day of the party, but people do it all the time <laughs> where they celebrate somebody's birthday on a different day. But the, the key is that a birth ought to be celebrated. And we ought to know what we're celebrating when we celebrate somebody's birthday. I, from far as what I know anyway, um, the December 25th date actually came from Constantine, the Roman emperor, back in uh, AD 336, somewhere around there. And he established, he established that specific day as the day that all Christians would worship and celebrate Jesus in Mass. Thank, thank God that it's established that whatever day he was born, we can celebrate the fact that he was born. Amen? Amen. The reason why we can celebrate is because he came so that we could have a better life. You don't want to talk about this today? All right. But John chapter 10, again, this time in the Amplified, I just want to highlight this. It says the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. Have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Yeah. It sounds like God wants you to have a good life. Yeah. A blessed life. Yeah. A fun-filled life. Yeah. A life to the full until it overflows. But the question of the day is, are you living that kind of life? Are you living an abundant life individually? When you look in the mirror, do you like what you see? Or do you struggle with who you are or who you have become? If so, then you can live a better life. He's got, a, he's got better for you. You are precious to him. You are fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. He left all of heaven's glory for you. And I challenge you, there is a better life for you to live. I was looking this up, and this came to me. I, I, I like to see it as supernatural. I'm just looking for a graphic to use as the title. But this scripture in the message translation says, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life, dreamed of. Is there a, a, a life that you dream of that, that, that's better than the one you're living right now? Well, if so, that's the reason why he came. He came to the earth, literally left heaven, and came down to the earth, not just so that you can hear a good story or he didn't come just to do some good things. He came specifically so that you and me could have better than we've been having. Yeah. Maybe you've been in a bad situation. I'm here to tell you there's better for you. Maybe things haven't been good for you financially. Maybe you're broke. Well, I'm here to tell you there's something better than broke. Yeah. Amen. Jesus came so you could have it. Let his coming then be in vain. We read in Luke chapter 2 this week, as I said, we read our chapters. Everybody, faith family, reads their chapter Monday through Friday. It's on our heart and mind. Well, Luke chapter 2 was one of the chapters that we read during this week. And it tells really what they call a Christmas story. It talks about the Virgin Mary and her experience with the angel that showed up and said, you're going to be pregnant. And she's like, I haven't had sex. And he was like, you're going to be pregnant. And she's like, how can that be? I don't know anybody. And he says, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and I'm show you that something supernatural is going to happen and you are going to be pregnant. And she's like, all right. Be it unto me according to you. She did that by faith. How many of you have a good faith family? Amen. That means everything we do, we do it by faith. And the way to live a better life, better than the one you've been living, is by faith, not by sight. You can't look at your bank account and see better. And if, if at anything, you're sort of selling if you looked at your bank account. If you looked at how much you get on the job, how much you have
So in Luke chapter 2, as I was trying to set up, the Bible talks about Mary about to give birth. In verse 6, it says this. In Luke 2, verse 6, it says, so, what, so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. This literally shows the birth of the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, his mother being a virgin, espoused to Joseph, giving birth to the son of the living God. He was born into the earth. And that birth, as it was that day, even up until this day, should be celebrated. And the number one reason why we should celebrate that Jesus came is because he came to give us a better life. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about, I know sometimes people send out Christmas cards and things of that nature, and they and on it will have a quote of this scripture. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, and a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But notice again, it says, for unto us a child is born. But think about why he was born. Why was Jesus born, even born?